Coleman. Okay, so this camera actually doesn't run off a of battery. It's an actually crank activated camera. Um, so this is the, the, the lever right here. There, if you see right here, there's a little detent that actually holds the, uh, this. So this handle actually pops in to that. So you hear that little click? So that just lets you know that it's secure. So whenever you're operating the camera, you wanna make sure that it's right there, okay? But to wind it up, you know, unclick it here. And you see this, this uh, little hole right here? Okay, yeah. So you're gonna match that with that, okay? So that way, now you have a cranking action, okay? Mm -hmm. So it actually cranks towards you, so counterclockwise. You can actually feel the tension in the camera. And once it's done winding, it'll actually stop. So we'll just keep going until it stops. There we go, mm -hmm. so it stopped, right? So now, through the operation, I go right here, click that, okay? Now, the meter's on the side here. Right now, it's set to 24 frames a second, but you can go all the way up to 64 and as low as 12. So to do that, you just kind of just turn this little dial right here back and forth. So we're gonna switch back to 24, okay? Now, this camera, um, to hit to record, is actually a button up here in the front. So if you click that, we'll listen to the camera. It's actually spinning right now, so you can see that. Okay, this dial up here is a um, measuring device to let you know how much film you're running through at the moment. Though it's not as accurate as I would like it to be, to be honest. So I wouldn't really depend on that per se. Okay. Next on the front here, we have interchangeable lenses. Okay, so this mount, basically you can mount three lenses to it, any ones you want. Um, but in this particular case, you only we only have one lens in the case. So you're gonna mount it here, right? And the way to do that, you just unscrew it here. And you can see it has a little, um, the little gate is in there, right? Mm -hmm. And it also has this, which is a actually a filter. So right now it's, it has a, the 85 filter equipped. Okay. Now this you wouldn't use indoors. You would use this outdoors. So whoever um, used this last actually just left that in there, which is probably not a good idea if you're shooting indoors. But um, that's an easy fix. So you just put the um, gel in there, right, or the filter, and it opens up if you need to remove it. Okay. There's a little pouch in there for these actual gels, and we'll put that in uh, momentarily. But it slides in here on the side, side slot. Just like that, okay? So this uh, mount for the lens is actually a screw-in mount, okay? So when you screw it in, you wanna make sure that the camera is level and that you're screwing it in from the top, okay? Um, like anything, any camera equipment, everything's custom made for this camera, okay? Everything that comes in the pack. If it doesn't fit or it's not uh, fitting in correctly, one of two things is happening. One, uh, it's not made for the camera, or two, you may be doing it wrong and chances are you're probably doing it wrong so don't try to force anything uh, anything on these cameras if it fits it should fit perfect if it's in the in the in the box okay um, another tip here is this little lever here is the diopter open and close shutter mm -hmm. right so when it's up it's closed when it's down it's open okay so that basically what I'm saying is you won't be able to see through the viewfinder if this thing is up. So when it's up, the little door inside goes like this, and it prevents light from actually uh, exposing the film. Okay. okay. It's not such a big deal. You can have it like that. It should be fine. Um, but if you wanted to, you have that option. Okay. All right. So now that we looked at the outside of this camera, let's get inside. Okay. So on the opposite side of all the dials, you have the, the case here. Now we have an O for open and F for shut. Um, it's German, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> basically, whatever the word is for close is, uh, starts with an F. I know, I need Alina right now. All right, so here, uh, like I said, that's closed, so I'm gonna rotate it to the O, and you see how it kind of popped up, okay? So there's a little seal in here, do you see that? Mm -hmm. And this little dial, what it does is it actually moves these little things to close it shut. So when you're practicing here, opening it and closing it, you'll actually see, or you'll feel the seal closing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me put this back, actually. Okay. 
So the inside of the camera, it's pretty cool. has a lot of cool little functions in it. And it's actually may look complicated and once you start loading it, may feel complicated. But once you get it down, it's, it's in my opinion, the easiest camera to load. Okay? Now, the way this camera functions is the top here is the, um, the blank uh, reel, right? Not the blank reel, I'm sorry, the, the, um, the fresh film. So that feeds into this dial here, goes through the gate, and then goes into a take-up reel, which is gonna be your exposed footage, okay? So it starts from the top all the way to the bottom. All right, now let's take a look at this yeah. device here. Yes. So if we look inside there, I don't know if you can get your camera in there, there are little tiny teeth, do you see them? I don't know, we're here and we tilt it towards uh, the camera. There's little tiny teeth in there, okay? Those little tiny teeth, are made to grab the perf on the film, okay? So you see those little, those little perforations, okay? That's made to wrap around that, okay? So I'll show you, I'll get to that in a moment. Another function is you open these right here, you see how these kind of move back and forth? This is to allow the film to actually enter for easy um, access, okay? Now, right here on the gate, um, in order to put the film to run through here, you wanna press this little silver button, or actually pull it, and you could actually open up the gate wide enough for a uh, film to actually run through. Okay? Once that's all complete, you want to close this here. Okay? And what this does is it's giving you an idea of where the film should be landing. Okay? So once we load it, if the film is scraping this metal pieces, it's probably not a good idea to scrape your film. So you want to get it very close but not uh, scraping. Okay? So... Let's go ahead and let's try this out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Okay. Now when you get your fresh roll of film, um, it's going to be filled up and it'll be uh, facing the right, the correct way for the emulsion, right? The emulsion side is, is the actual, the brown side. This is the side that gets exposed. Okay. Um, you're going to take about a foot length out. Okay. And a foot length is a few seconds. So, you know, don't want to take more than that. Okay. And let's just pretend that this is a full reel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, I'm gonna wind it up first. I wanted to, after the interview, I wanted to be just a couple winds. And the reason I'm doing this is so that the film can actually move through the camera when we test it out. So that should be good. Oh, by the way, too, a full wind is, I believe, 27 to 30 seconds of recording. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this side, perforation down. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And what I'm trying to do is all the little teeth on the bottom of this uh, particular um, pulley, I'm trying to get the teeth to line up with the perforation, okay? Now, what I like to do is I like to just open it up like so and just kind of push it down. Here, let me do it this way. Push it down until I kind of feel it in there and then give it a little tug. And I could tug it this way, I could tug it that way, and it is caught right on those teeth, which is perfect, okay? Next thing I wanna do is I wanna open up the gate here, right? So I'm gonna pull that open, run the film right through, like so, okay? Now I'm not gonna exactly um, pull this in here just yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna close this and see where the film is landing. So right now, it's kind of between the metal piece and between the gate, mm -hmm. which means it's good, it's perfect, okay? So I'm gonna open this up again by pressing this down. So I know this one's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wrap it around the, the exit part of it. Okay, so same thing, I'm trying to do the same exact function as this one. I'm putting the perforations down and I'm, I'm looking for the teeth on the bottom of the, of the uh, of the pulley. So once the teeth go into the perforation, it's locked in. So right now, it's locked in. I'm yanking on it, right? And it's 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 locked in. So looking at it here, it's a little too close to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lessen it up just a little bit. And now it looks like it's good. So let's close it. Mm, maybe a little too close. Okay, so let me open that up. And move it just a little bit closer. Okay. Nope. Still a little too close. Okay, so let's let's do that. 
There we go. So now, in my opinion, that is great. It's not touching the metal piece and it's not touching this, okay? Now, it may look like it's very close to this, but the way this film, this camera operates is since it's on these teeth and on this track, the, the, the footage won't move. You won't have any kind of jittery, okay? Which is great for what we're doing, especially because uh, some of these older cameras, when the film's running through, it does jitter quite a bit. So you'll actually get more stable footage with this particular camera. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it and make sure that uh, the film...